I don't want to generalize, but man, what a beautiful women <laughs> that they have. I mean, <laughs> you know what I mean. You know, if you're gonna have, if you, I, I mean, don't don't generalize, but we are gorgeous. So there's sort of like, I mean, I kind of get it. Like if I just was a misogynist, I'd be like, you know, get up there, like <laughs> get in there, ladies, <laughs> get up there, tuts. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Pilots 101 podcast with me, Lisa Timmons, and my beautiful, wonderful, oh, just delightful co-host, Chris Pitos. <laughs> How are you doing, Chris? <laughs> I'm doing well. How How's it going over there? How is it going on the other part of the east side? <laughs> <laughs> the, well, northeast. The northeast north. side. Yeah, because you're you're like legit I'm, east side. I'm yeah, I'm out in the burbs. I'm in the suburbs. <laughs> She's the um, cute, trendy lady in Pasadena. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm, stylish mm-hmm. fun lady in Pasadena. <laughs> I don't, you know, I'm a suburban mom. That's like the that's hey, the deal. <laughs> I love it. I I'll I will live that suburban mom mom life vicariously through you. <laughs> oh yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. How's it going over in um I guess is it the valley? No. Is it the valley? No. Yeah, yeah. I guess we're kind of like we're right at the um the gateway guys, to the valley. Here's what Sorry. I love. Don't apologize because this is just a truth that's Californian yeah. sketch in SNL. We love talking about the geography of our city. If you live we in just- Los Angeles, you want to ask somebody, hey, what neighborhood are you in? How's it going over there? Are you guys all right? Did you feel the rain when we had rain that one time three months ago? Did you guys get the rain? Yeah. It's like we live a few miles apart, maybe 10 miles apart, but like but it, oh. 15 degrees. It's probably 15 degrees cooler where she is oh, than from where I am. There have been, there's so many zip codes between me and you. It's just so many neighborhoods. LA is vast. great. LA's LA is great that way. It's so fun. I highly recommend if you're not here to come to, to come be here. Yeah. To come visit. Come visit. You well, know? you know, I used to have a very um uh strong opinion about New Yorkers moving here because I had a bunch of New Yorkers who I interacted with. This is hey, not gonna paint y'all with the same brush. Uh, I'm but not gonna make I a know it's a thing but though. There is a genre of New Yorker who comes to LA and yeah. then behaves as if it's some kind of, uh, you know, like, ugh, you're welcome. I'm here. It's terrible. And you're like, no one asked you to come. <laughs> like, go. Yeah. But we love it here. You, you know, people who come here and immediately fall in love with LA, mm-hmm. I feel like a lot of times those are people from like some really brutal winters. <laughs> yeah. People who have lived through brutal winters are very into LA and I understand why. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cause we, our winters are not brutal. They're not brutal. They're beautiful, but you know, We're summer's, <laughs> summer's its own brutal. Now we have oh, like, summer's well rough. now, how long have you been here? 20 years next year. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. I feel like I've been here maybe 10. Okay. I don't I can't know. But you're also you're from not that far away. Yeah, I'm from San Francisco. But you're Californian. But, yes, I am Californian, so I understand. But it's funny, I think if you're from anywhere outside LA, you're taught to hate LA yes. as a Californian. I think that that I feel like that's fair. It's funny, I used to say you know, because I feel like there was a lot of like anti LA sentiment coming from New York. There's this, like mm, weird kind mm-hmm. of rivalry. And the weird thing is like a lot of New Yorkers love to shit on LA, but LA isn't even really check it for anybody. Nobody cares. Yeah. But then <laughs> we're it's so like, chill. <laughs> yeah. I think that from San Francisco, it's like, oh, people from San Francisco hate LA, which I think um, has to do with sports, which I'm like, okay, I don't well, know. Well, fair. I mean, um, there have been <laughs> stabbings. So, you know, yes, I'm not going to. Legitimate stabbings. I don't want to. Yeah, you downplay that. <laughs> but then you, get, but then you get here, and people are, from LA are like, "Wait, what? What rivalry? Like, I it's know, like the no, worst snag no. ever. Like, you're just like, okay, screw you. Like, oh yeah, oh yeah, I'm mad. Yeah, okay, oh, yeah, I didn't know. I didn't, I didn't even know. I didn't so even know. it's so annoying. <laughs> um, Los Angeles. What is it? Is City of Angels right? I was like, City what is Angels. that in Spanish? <laughs> it's uh, the it City is. of Angels. Right. Imagine if we lived in. 
Los Spookies, <laughs> the city of the spookies. <laughs> you picked it up. You picked it up. When Ma'am, I was... <laughs> you know, I know what you, I'm smelling what you're stepping in. I'm smelling what you're stepping in. <laughs> yes. Los Spookies, which is what we did. Um, we watched on HBO. I believe how many? I, there's two seasons? No. Oh, there's Can one I... season. And I want to say there's like eight episodes. I think HBO generally does eight episodes. Yes. One uh... season. It's a great. You know what? Here's what I have so to say. Fun. Here's what I have to say. <laughs> Let, what um, I would love if 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 you told us, Lisa, <laughs> your your feelings about it. Because what I want to do here is center your experience as a Latino you're woman. So sweet. Well, okay. I <laughs> first of all, you're such a doll, baby. <laughs> center your experience, ma'am. You know what? For me, the person with whom I feel the, the character with whom I feel the closest connection yeah. is Fred Armisen as a person because <laughs> he is surrounded by Latin Americans. Like these are people who are from Latin American countries born there. You know, like I am like him. I'm more like his experience is closer to mine in oh. the sense that like, like, for example, I've read articles about Los Spookies. You know me, like I'm here for all the Latin comedy Anything oh, it's crossover so good. Yes. makes me so happy. The Spanglish for me, that's yes. that's way more familiar to me. Is that's what the, yeah. The blending of the the English and the Spanish because I'm not fluent in Spanish. I mm. can speak some. I I will forever be self conscious about it. But <laughs> you know, there's this. Some she says. I know that's a lie. <laughs> You're very sweet. It's not uh. as much as I wish. <laughs> but I I just love. Um, seeing the comfort the comfort level that people that american audiences are having with subtitles in yes. general and the openness and that opens your world to so many shows like you know right. we're talking about Los of spookies now but like i've gotten into some 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 korean series that i really loved and yes. it's only because i you know was like okay i'm gonna just commit to watching something with subtitles and and get past it and yeah Holy crap. It's like, if you're able to do that, it just opens up. It's so much fun. The yeah. blending of cultures, the freaking wackiness. It's so fun. That Yeah. This show is wacky indeed. It's, <laughs> it's so totally wacky. wacky. It's, it feels like, it It just feels like Fred Armisen to me. Um, I don't know him, but I feel like he, yeah, it just, it's so, um, it's so fun. So, so the whole thing is pretty much, I'd probably say like 80% in Spanish. That feels um, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's just like, there's a minute where I'm like, oh, wait, this is going to be in Spanish. <laughs> like, I was yes. like, okay. Yes, okay. Like, I don't know what I was expecting <laughs> or like what I was thinking, but it was just like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is all in Spanish. Like, this there's is a, all in Spanish. <laughs> which is so cool because it takes place in LA. Um, it takes place in LA. I looked and it's it looks like they filmed it in Santiago, Chile. Oh. It's where ah. they filmed it. And why am I Oh yeah. And what is it? Bernardo Velasco. Oh, that's hilarious. They have the wrong picture for him on IMDb. Oh, there Oh, we, you're there like, wait, that's not him. Bernardo um. Velasco. Oh my god. <laughs> yes, it's it's so it's so great. So you have like this mix of of, of Latin Americans from different yes different countries. different countries. So Ana Fabrega, she's I believe her parents are Panamanian. I believe she okay. was born and raised in the U.S. Wow. And so from what I understand, because I don't have you know the ear to have heard an accent from her, but that's why they say at the beginning, oh, why do you- how was your trip in Minnesota? Your accent sounds crazy. But by the end, and the, the, and so for her, she was like getting her, like her Spanish, I think was rusty. And she was like getting her pronunciation. And like, as she's oh, playing this character, yeah. by the end, by the final episode, they were like joking about how much better her pronunciation was. Oh my gosh, that's How much funny. more comfortable she was with the language by the end uh, yeah. of the, uh, that first series. But, that's so funny. But to me, as someone who like, listen, when you're like, when you are, Lat Latine, Latinx, whatever you prefer yeah. to be called in the United States. Yeah. I think that there's either this of course I know you can really relate to this. So yeah. much of like whether or not you are a good Latin person, 
you know, Ugh. depends on your mastery of the language. And oh, it's which so, is it's it's such a it's it's such a <laughs> mind fuck. You know, it's it really it's messes such with a mind fuck. You think yeah. to yourself, oh, I'm a bad. You know, I'm not good at this. I'm I'm not I'm, Latin I'm, enough, or whatever. I'm not Latin enough. I'm not too. But like, I what I love for this show is that you know I got to see a bunch of different actors and creators who, yeah. like someone like Ana Fabrega, that like. To hear that she, her Spanish, you know, was clunky at the beginning and then she got better at the end. It's just this idea that, like, we're all – this represents the diaspora. Like, they're, we're all from yes. all these different countries. We're yes. not a monolith. But this was a fun thing where you can plug in for a couple of, like, little cultural moments of feeling like – like, the – I love the – tradition of like storytelling in Latin America and yeah like, and and the and the the celebration of Day of the Dead the embracing of the the macabre in in, in that way it's, <laughs> it's so the best it's so colorful and it's so delightful the way that it's done and I just feel like it's I feel like it's a fun way for American audiences to see the like spooky it is Los Spookies <laughs> it's Los Spookies yeah yes there's so it's got um uh, Julio Torres. Oh my gosh, she's uh, please, so funny. Uh, please, just let's just before I start saying the cast, like let's just ignore my terrible accent because oh, as, speaking of like I'm a terrible Californian because I don't speak any Spanish <laughs> and I should like we for sure I for sure should but hey, anyway you know how to order a taco <laughs> so you need I do I do um, <laughs> Bernardo Velasco he plays mm-hmm. Ronaldo yeah they're so great and then obviously Fred Armisen's in there. Cassandra, I don't know how to say her last name at all. Let me see. <laughs> but she oh, plays I think that, Ursula. That looks, uh, Changarati? That looks like an Italian last I'm name. I'm like, it looks intense. Um, it's, I mean, it's, <laughs> but it's yeah, beautiful. Julio Torres is from El Salvador. Yes. Um, and then Fred Armisen's uh, so, parents are Colombian? Mom? Uh, so he, he actually, I think he is. Um, a very has a very diverse background. He's got I a remember. wild background, right? He, his background <laughs> is actually insane because right. I remember reading his Wikipedia because, like, I have what, what he did some character on SNL pronounce like did this accent and I I, can't, I think it was like Venezuelan or something and I was just like I immediately if someone does that if a performer does that you look them up to see if they're part of the tribe because uh. <laughs> you always want to be able to brag. Well, you know Shakira's from Colombia. Well, you know right. for Sylvia Vergara's from Colombia. So yeah. let me see. So I looked him That's up and funny. his is insane, actually. He had um it says his mother was is from, uh, was born in Venezuela and he has oh, family Venezuela. um from Germany. This part is amazing. For much of his life, Armisen thought his paternal paternal grandfather was Japanese. However, his grandfather uh <laughs> Was actually born in Ulsan, Korea, and adopted a Japanese name and persona after the massacre of the Koreans in 1923 when he was a high school student. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Park, who was believed to be homosexual, studied aesthetics at Tokyo Imperial University and became a professional dancer Whoa. before moving to Germany. Oh my gosh. Yeah. He. Uh, uh, that's why he's that such a, a genius. He's just got a little bit of everything. You know a what I crazy, mean? <laughs> a cr- I love that you had like a grandfather with like a secret identity. He <laughs> yeah. like, he witnessed protection himself. Yeah. Also he's with Natasha Leone. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> so <not>. winning, <laughs> like so, so winning. I mean, yeah, I think it was, I think everyone, I mean, I obviously SNL, what I'm, obviously he was great, yeah. but then w- that like, just that theme song from Portlandia. I think is when everyone sort of was like, oh, huh? gosh. <laughs> like, like I, who is this man? <laughs> my fav- one of my favorite Fred Armisen's, Armisen uh, moments was on SNL when he was, he did the Prince show with, mm-hmm. uh, with Maya Rudolph as Beyonce. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Prince, well, well, those talk two. talk to you now. <laughs> <laughs> those two as a team. I mean, he's obviously such a good like team teamwork guy. You know what I mean? Well, like he's well, so many partners. That, he and he's one of the, he Ana Fabrega and Julio Torres are the three creators of this series. Okay, got it, got it, got it. So it's yeah. their three voices driving the story. I uh, I love it. There is there's so many funny moments. Um, uh, I so, think one of my favorite jokes yeah please was when um, the news reporter, the very mysterious lady, <laughs> who you can tell that her <laughs> mystery is going to be a thing throughout the season. Um, I she was like. Uh, when she reported on the dog that had saved the child 
Ed's life three or four Several times. times. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, and the, ch- the child is now concerned that he might become a burden to the dog. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yeah. That's such a fun part that she plays. Oh my gosh. She's what a great. great part. Well, and I don't know how familiar you are with Latin American television programming, but like that whole TV <laughs> show thing, I think it's pre yeah. is like, I think it's on Univision where it's just like, you know, I always remember my grandmother watching the news shows and everything. And these ladies would be so glamorous and they're so like, glamorous, so sexy and so like so like objectified. And it was so funny because I remember, yeah, when I would visit her as a teenager, we'd be like, "Can we put on the MTV Awards or whatever?" Yeah. And like my grandmother would just be like so scandalized, but by, by how everyone was dressed, and she'd turn on her news, and I'm like, "What are you talking about? Your yeah, ladies, look at this. Your what ladies this? are doing." Just- the same thing like this is like she's wearing what Shakira was wearing like (laughs) exactly is she a host is she a presenter what's happening I've never I've never seen the source material itself but I've seen enough spoofs to know that it's got to be legit it's pretty legit it's pretty legit well I don't want to generalize but man what a beautiful women that they have I mean you know what I mean you know if you're gonna have if you, I, I mean don't don't generalize but we are gorgeous so there's sort of like I mean I kind of get it like if I just was a misogynist I'd be like you know get up there like get in there ladies get up there tuts um yeah. Yeah, I my first note is sweet dulcet tones of the Spanish language. <laughs> just like yes. like I just feel like for a second I was like cuz I was like when I desi- realized like oh this is going to be in Spanish and then I was like just then I just kind of like laid back into it, you know, like a hot tub. <laughs> like you're like, "Oh, it's hot." And then you're like, "Oh, it's hot." Oh, okay. <laughs> but I'm here. I've, I'm acclimating and getting yeah. into it. It's just uh. it's such a I mean just like objectively it is such a beautiful language. I mean, Aww. yeah, it is. It's like the rolling of the R to me yeah. is very yeah. familiar. Um, I love uh, Ren- Ronaldo. He, um, so I guess there's this gag that his, so that's not a common way that you would say it would normally it's Reynaldo with a Y R. So I guess that becomes a running joke throughout the series that he oh. has this weird version of a name. Pronunciation. Like, like instead of Ronald, it's like being like, my name's Ronald. And they're like, no. Oh, I see. That's I see. Like, that's not, <laughs> there's not Ronalds. What are you talking that's about? That's funny. Which, he's a, he's a fun actor. I've never seen him before. I had um, never seen him before either. He, I love his character's earnestness. Yeah. He's, a, he's, a, yeah. So the whole, the whole, it opens with, um, I guess it's his cousin's quinceanera. Um, yes. Or is it his sister? Anyway, maybe I think it's his, his sister. Cousin. I think it's his, I, either his sister or his cousin. Uh, they, and it's like this this elaborate, <laughs> just like dark, um, goth, <laughs> spooky uh, theme. And it's great. Like it's got like eyeball cupcakes. Like she's she's got like – she looks like a corpse. It's, it's, so, it's awesome. It's so cool. <laughs> and, and basically it's that he and his friends um, – Ronaldo and his friends um, base, uh, through this party. So they uh, have like a knack for like the spooky presentation. The spooky atmosphere and presentation. Yeah. Yes. Um, so they threw this fabulous party and Fred Armisen <laughs> is the valet. Um, and that's his like – the uh, a whole um, gag for him is that it's his – kind of his life calling <laughs> to be like the – he is like the best valet That's what I love too is I also feel like a character – I'm really happy they they chose to make him a valet because I also feel like (laughs) the vantage point of a – of a valet in LA is you oh my see God. everything. <laughs> you see everything. You you see the car. People treat you like you're invisible. Mm. So you kind of have access oh to God. everything. I think right. anytime you're sort of like the help, it's yeah. really – and you create a character like that. I always feel like that's such a fun vantage point because you get to see – you know, I've been a nanny. I've, Talk- you know, <laughs> I've, I've lived that life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, uh, the below the line <laughs> sort of. <laughs> Yo, I'm downstairs people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. I've Being been downstairs nanny, people. The whole other <laughs> ball game. Yeah. You're just like, it's weird to like, to have part of your job be that you're invisible. Yeah. Like, you know, like purposefully. Um, but like then, 
yeah. And, yeah. And so in another show in the United, I feel like in a mainstream American show, the valet would never even, you'd never see his point of view, but he, yes. like you said, he's not a valet because he's just a valet because no. like, you know, that's the stereotypical job he would do. He's the absolute best at parking the, the best <laughs> he's the best valet in on in the world like everyone respects world. him the like, flashback of when he was a little kid just like parking <laughs> it's like so into it it's so like i just it, yeah it's, it's just so silly i love it um so he's a valet and then um uh, so the three of them oh ursula is like she makes like teeth she, She's a dental hygienist, I think. Yeah, but she also makes teeth. Oh, yeah, she <laughs> like, makes teeth. That's right. That doesn't mm, – that's what I love. When you said silly, okay, the chocolate. Oh, yes. And then Julio, the, Torre, when, uh, Julio when Torres, Torres is the – The chocolate heir, the heir to the, the chocolate He's fortune. the prince of chocolate. <laughs> he's the yeah. prince of chocolate. <laughs> when he pops up out of that cubicle to threaten the dentist oh, my with gosh. no longer giving children cavities – Yes. I feel like that's the moment where you know exactly what the level of silly is going to be in the and the dentist is legit scared, terrified, yeah. terrified. I I was like I was so pleased because I've seen his stand up and it's so it's so whimsical and like I feel like maybe Ugh. he's the one who wrote the joke about the dog uh worrying about being a burden to the the child being worried about being a burden to the dog <laughs> because I feel like that's his sensibility. He always sort of thinks about the weird point of view that he, has, he wouldn't consider. Okay, you guys. So right after I watched the pilot, I I did rewatch my favorite shapes, and I just <laughs> gotta tell you, like I it it he's just the weirdest and best. He, he's just absurd as a comedian. He is he completely uh, his, absurd. His comedy is totally absurdist, and it's so um, it's so, it's so good. special. Like I don't know. It's just it, it, like such a specific sensibility. I love yes, it. Yes. It's – yeah, exactly. It's just a completely – yeah, he has his own point of view and it's amazing. Um, yeah. So uh, he's 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 great it's in it. Amazing. And, Anna and Fabrega's then, character. <laughs> yes. And then she shows up, Anna Fabrega. She's sisters with um, the dental teeth – the teeth maker – Teeth maker and lady. <laughs> she, oh, so then the next the next project they have is the uh, somebody who come oh, the father the priest I should say <laughs> and this is all part of like this is where this is where colonialism unites us and yes. Catholicism <laughs> y'all yes and as a Filipino woman like I understand that there's just a father walking <laughs> around all, the party all because yeah. he's part of the community he's probably like I had um, I want to say it's like my how is this man related to me? I'm like trying to. Right. My aunt who married who married my biological uncle, her uncle was a priest. So then he was like the family priest who was there for like, I don't know if if y'all did this or what or anyone out there, but like house blessings, car blessings, <laughs> baptisms. Like uh, anytime you buy like a new house, it's gotta be blessed. You got a new car, it's gotta be blessed. Like everything has to be blessed. And, Hashtag and stay blessed. That's right. And blessed by a priest. And and what that means is uh, it's a party. <laughs> There's a, a blessing is a party. So it's like basically a That's roast so pig funny. in the center of the table <laughs> is all that, that. Means. <laughs> You know, you, I mean, you said something that I think is very interesting, you know, talking about colonialism, you're Filipino. I am, my mother's Colombian. So I call it ethnically Catholic. Like mm-hmm, it's not, mm-hmm. it's not, are you Catholic? It's how Catholic was your family? Right. No, 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 no. Are yeah. They? It's sort of like, I think the equivalent that I've heard in mainstream is like um, how like you. Jude- Judaism is like both a culture and religion. Yes. Like, you know how you, yes. you right. Like that. Well, oh yes. Yeah. That explains. So I feel like that's like, that's what I, it, right. Eth- culturally Catholic <laughs> is us. Or yes. Like, so yeah, the blessing, like I can, like, we didn't have, we didn't have blessings. Day. I didn't, we didn't have <laughs> blessings, but I was told that I couldn't have a boyfriend until I had a major credit card and a driver's license. Mm-hmm. So I feel like the, the that, that like strictness <laughs> The, like, oh yeah, it's all the term it's all Catholic. Of authority, it all it flows yeah. through these veins. <laughs> and then you, yeah, you had the thing of being half white, so like maybe, maybe if you <laughs> weren't, it might be a different story. But like Catholic school, K, I went to Catholic oh. school K through twelve. 
I and like uh, what yeah. was that like? Oh, uh, I couldn't I torture. Like <laughs> Like I didn't know how to dress myself till I got to college because oh, I was like because of the uniform. Yeah. You know what's so, so like, funny? <laughs> I feel like I always wanted to wear a uniform because I was yeah. like, I hate having to think about this, and I'm so bad at it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it was it was wild, and then um, yeah, just so many. I like religion was always a subject that I had to study, like always. So That's it was so like annoying. Sometimes it got. Sometimes it replaced things like science. <laughs> Sometimes it replaced things Ma'am. like, I mean, it's, or I arts. Know. Like it just was always a subject. So yeah, but anyway, so there's a priest at the quinceanera. Oh my god! I digress. And um, he uh, he then hires the tree, the los spookies. Well, they're they're not named yet till the till the end of the episode. But he yeah, hires exactly. them to perform <laughs> a. Exorcism because because business is slow. <laughs> business is slow because there's a new priest who's way hotter in town. And, and when they joke that his when he's like, oh, his lips are so shiny. <laughs> I had no idea things. that they were going to actually really just shine up this man's lips yeah. so aggressively. Like it's, it's like awkward. It's great. You're like, why isn't? How is there not just like? How have you not picked up every lint particle in, that's floating around? Like. <laughs> Well, also, too, I feel like because Catholicism is such a, you know, a huge uh, presence in Latin America culturally, yeah, you can make jokes about priests in that way because it's like they're <laughs> not – I think here in the States, like, we're not around priests as much, or at least no. I'm not. But right. I feel like it's so much more common in the culture that you can, like, laugh at a priest who's, like, getting jealous of a young priest because it just – yeah, it, there's not as much of a mystique to it. Like I it's feel just like part of your world. It's just a part of your world. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So he, so he's going to perform an exorcism to kind of like because he's the like. There's like even this great bit where he says like, who, who's, who's better, like the priest who um, doesn't know how to fill out forms or the priest who made the forms. Like it's like just a funny <laughs> bit. This bureaucracy brag. The, yeah. Like, so he's just a total nerd, and. So he asks them to perform an ex so that yeah he asks them to set up an exorcism so that like the community is sort of back into him again. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's the perfect first episode to me cuz that's like the classic I used to always joke, "Hey, if you don't want to get um possessed by the devil, don't be Catholic." Cuz it really seems like only those Catholics <laughs> they stay getting possessed. If you don't believe, I feel like you'll be fine. <laughs> they stay getting possessed. That's they the truth. Stay- uh, but then the individual who gets possessed is none other than Tati, uh, Ana, Ana Fabrega's character. Fabrega. I love Tati because Tati is just she's oh, a cartoon. Let's let's talk about when it when she first appears. She's <laughs> she is she. So her sister says like, "Oh, let's go to the rectory. My sister will be there. She's got a new job there. Apparently, Tati has like a million jobs. A million. So she gets to the jobs. rectory." <laughs> And they're talking to the priest about, like, what he wants. And Tati's job is literally – he's like, oh, it's so hot. And her job is to just spin the fan. The fan blades. The fan blades. Like, she's spinning it. And he's like, you know what? This isn't working. I think we're going to have to let you go. <laughs> it's like, ridiculous. Okay. Yeah. In that moment, I think I wrote down, who wrote this? <laughs> Come get your maniac who wrote this. I was just this. like, this is – ridiculous i'm in so silly (laughs) but yeah it was great how about um you know the teeth from when she gets when she's pretending to be possessed i i i can't remember where i read this after the first season came out i was just obsessed with this show and so i read all the articles i could in interviews with with all the creators and the and the actors and i guess she (laughs) was like requested these weird small teeth (laughs) and I love it because it's like you I feel like they're making these choices of just like oh this would be silly yeah totally and it's it's so joyful and dumb oh yeah do you know what they look like at all (laughs) it's not scary no it's just completely silly it's completely silly um (laughs) they reminded me of um this is a deep dark poll um (laughs) Toddlers and tiaras, um, yes, the flippers. flippers. Yes, <laughs> dude, I knew you were gonna know. You were gonna know. Honey, <laughs> listen, I was hashtag honey boo boo. 
go go juice. Oh, like man, that show is so messed up. But like, oh, it was so messed up. Entertaining. I'm like, we are watching child abuse, yeah. but I cannot turn it off. <laughs> like, no, it's just I, flippers. Yeah. So basically, she, it looks like she's wearing like toddler flippers. Toddler like, flippers so on a grown small. woman <laughs> <laughs> who's possessed. Like, and the thing I love too that they do in the show is it's not magic. It's no. not. Um, it's theatrics. Crazy special effects. Right. It's theatrics, but it's also like low um, key, like the. <laughs> it's like it's like steampunk technology. Yeah, it's like yeah. Weird old cranks, like the, yeah, you know the things that are lifting and up. They're in the back. They're like pulling levers. They're yeah. like pushing buttons, and <laughs> it's all like it working. And she's floating up and Tati, and like there's no. The thing that's great is you. We also see from that episode. These are not people who are going to be explaining what's happening. Like, no, this is no, not a no, thing no. where we need to know. Like, you just have to buy in that this that good it at works. This. Yeah. They're good at this. Yeah. They they make things spooky. They don't right. create supernatural. No. And there isn't any, but yeah, it's just uh, Well, because what you see, what you see with Tati is like she's like obviously there's a lot of special effects going on. There's like yes. they do all kinds of stuff like Hollywood eyes it but like then what you when you, the crew you cut to a scene of the crew who was like quote unquote like doing you know like making everything happen but they have these you're right like these steampunk levers and like just like it's you know the two aren't related but you're just like <laughs> you're just so like yeah fun. okay okay <laughs> it's so fun it's so fun um yeah. I highly recommend it uh it was just yeah it's not scary at all which like which is great because I want to – because I always want to be able to recommend uh, anything hor- in the horror genre yeah. that I can recommend to friends who aren't horror people makes me right. so happy. Like the the Wellington it, Paranormal of Yeah, all. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it is. It's just that it's from the minds of this like amazing Latin American team that like has that with the, in, in a part of the culture. In it, well, you like, know, yeah, I was thinking that too because I feel like um, it's what we do in the shadows, but it's yeah, um, and I, yeah, but with Latin like American yeah, with the nice. with the Latin American yeah, um, like uh, yeah, folklore <laughs> and stuff. But that's the mm-hmm. fun thing too is like there's so ma- many um, Latin American folk tales with like because you know Catholicism again came in and then yes. blended with those those fun indigenous uh, you know traditions yeah you end up with this with you know this continent with varying shades of supernaturality right i feel like it's more accepted in latin culture like you'll Uh, yeah the 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 magical realism of it all like i always i always associate that (laughs) yeah again we are the same same i always say that the filipino culture is just a fear-based culture (laughs) because it's like oh my gosh it's just like we because because I think you're right. It's like the cult the when Catholicism was taking over, they had to do something with these like indigenous beliefs. And so, so they just used fear. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it was just like, you know, they really doubled down on the fear. Uh, but like things like um when we pass by woods in the night or trees at nighttime, like we have to say something. <laughs> like like cuz otherwise you're disturbing like the spirits that live there. So it's what like do you a whole say? Do you know what it is? It's like is can I it's like tabby tabby put like can I please pass? Oh, I love that. That's yeah, like because, yeah, it's like everything has like a spirit. So like trees, like you know, everything has like there's lots of creatures that live in these woods and and all that stuff. And it's you're acknowledging cool. that. I love that. Well, I think that's so that's so beautiful. Yeah, and instead what we have is just um it is just you know now we just we'll just cut down trees willy nilly and look where that's gotten us <laughs> like instead okay. of saying like instead of thinking that all these things are important you know now for the last two thousand years we're just like no 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 you tree are here to serve me like you know what I mean yeah it's <laughs> it's well I, it's terrible it's, it is terrible it's like I feel like I I feel like I'm you know, as somebody who didn't really know a lot about like my mom's culture, I still really don't like, I always, I'm always so hungry for stuff like this where you can even, you can even feel like a tiny flavor of what may be 
you know, related to you because you just don't see that as much represented. Although we're seeing more. We are seeing more. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh. Which reminds the- me, I just saw a trailer for Encanto, which is set in Colombia. Oh. It's a new Disney, I think, is it Pixar? Disney? Well, it's well they're coming all from the Disney. same now. They're all, right? <laughs> okay. Thank you. Every Disney owns everything. They and do. And mm-hmm. it, it looks very beautiful and, and very whimsical. And- yes. I think I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And I'm very curious to check that out. And, you know, hey, the Colombian uh, uh, network to which I am attached. Hey, have you seen it? Have you seen the trailer? Have you seen the trailer? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I'm excited to see. I didn't realize it was Colombian. I Yeah, that's exciting. Yeah. Um, I have a proposal, which is like hot off the press. I think, Ooh, I think yes. we should do, and I'm going onto this blindly, blindly. I trust you. I think we should do Squid Game. Yes. Right, because I was like, watch that next. It's everyone's the hottest talking, thing right now. Everyone's, everyone's talking, talking about, about it. it. Yeah, and um, we're gonna I, go in blind. I'm excited. To, uh, I'm excited to go for it. That that will be definitely be our next one. It's apparently the most watched show TV. on TV ever, ever, ever. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's like I think it's on Netflix, and all I know, all I know is that it's Korean, and it is just a ride. That's all oh, I know. I so swear. I, can't the, wait. The the Korean TV series and movies that I've seen just in the past couple of years oh, have I, have it's just blown me away. Like the commentary yeah. on social class. Oh it, yeah. It, it's it's so it's so of the moment. Totally. <laughs> and like even though, you know, it's like uniquely Korean. Korean. It's like it's so universal how, yeah. how these yeah. issues are, are 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 treated. It's yeah. Well, yeah, I think we uh, – Parasite, obviously. Oh, um, but then, like, Kingdom, right, is, mm-hmm. um, was such a good show. That's a good show. Um, maybe we'll have to pin in – you know, put a pin in that. We'll put a pin <laughs> in Kingdom. Kingdom for sure. Oh. That, that's on Netflix, but yeah. Don't, don't get me started on those guardsmen's hats. Those hats. Those hats. Ooh, those are so Amazing. sharp. Oh, my gosh. No, that's a, straight up. <laughs> that's a legitimately scary show. But show, it's yeah, it's so no good. loads of spookies. No, 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 no. <laughs> that is a terrifying show. And it's Don't amazing. Say zombies. <laughs> yeah, and it's amazing when you can be terrified through subtitles. Like, you oh know what I mean? Gosh. Because, how like, you, how am I scared and reading? Yeah. <laughs> because you're just like, I don't know. I'm scared. I mean, Parasite did the same thing to me where I was just like, the like, tense, the tent. Oh, ooh, speaking the basement. Of Parasite. Yeah. How about. The scene where dad starts fingering mom <laughs> on the couch and the whole family's underneath the table. I was watching that <laughs> with my now fiance's parents. And I was dying because these are two British people oh who my can't God. even acknowledge that sex is a thing people do. No. Mm-hmm. And this was happening. I was dying because I was like, I know they can't handle this. And um, Chris's dad just pretended to have narcolepsy and fall yeah. asleep. <laughs> I was like, this is, I know you're lying. I know you see exactly what I'm seeing. Oh my God. That's such a good scene, but you're like, oh. It was so, like, oh, it's so everyone's there. Everyone is just, oh. I, I felt like it was five movies in one. There were so many moments where you're just like, I couldn't breathe. Like, no. <laughs> it's too it much. <laughs> it was a ride. It was just like, oh it's man. Amazing. And then we, we checked our basement when we got home and I'm like, is there another basement here? I don't know. Like, Turns I just- out I was up in Chris's basement, but we're like, we're friends, so it's fine. <laughs> when that woman pushed, Mm-mm. when you go downstairs and her, no. her, her little chubby body is just like doing Mm-mm. that, that, no. Is no. A, no. that is an image <laughs> that I never want to see ever again. <laughs> or just like anytime a light bulb's like going out and flickering i'm just like what is that is it yeah. is it I, morse code what's happening i feel like i like to pretend like the whole reason i don't own a house is i'm like ugh do you know how often those things just get haunted <laughs> <laughs> or what if i had a parasite situation Listen, when it, yeah when in oh, fact it's yeah it's Chris, more of a like would thanks, you watch boomer. would you wa- <laughs> would you watch my movie about 
someone living in my apartment <laughs> while I'm here. <laughs> I don't know where they go. Like they're like, it's a very low stakes parasite. You know? Yeah. You should. The plot twist. They're my roommate and I'm just an asshole and I treat them like they've been living off me. Plot twist. Uh I'm the parasite. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Yeah. The, uh, the modern equivalent, the okay boomer version is just like, you're living in the in-law unit of, of a boomer's house and just like, just feeding in to their death. Like you're just like, <laughs> wait, you guys did this to us. You I guys tr- did this to us. I None of us that. can buy homes because of you. Because of you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know. It's like when I was your age, it's like, well, oh thank you for just destroying the planet and the economy. How dare you? <laughs> and now, now we just have to all listen to Greta Thunberg because we're just Squared. <laughs> I kept, you know what? I thought the other day that a huge leap in my emotional growth was my ability to recognize that I can have mentors or idols who are younger than me. Ooh. Because just because they're younger and have been on this planet longer doesn't right. necessarily mean that I am wiser than them. That's the truth, Malala. <laughs> This whole generation, my niece, my nieces. Oh, yeah. I like, I. No, it's, yeah, I think you're right. That's, it's funny. I feel like we, I've, yeah, there was, a, it started when like all the like stars, I feel like the first pangs of it that I felt of like, oh, we're cresting an age that like now I'm, I guess, approaching middle age. It's like, oh yeah. I think when Zac Efron first came out and I was like, wait, what's happening? That feels right. <laughs> I was like, wait when a high school, when high, high school musical, was a big right? moment for us when yes. we realized we're too old for this. Yeah, I was like, wait a minute. No, you're attractive. I don't no 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 no. I don't understand. <laughs> Hold on. You're you're very young. You're this a baby. feels yeah. This you're feels not child. okay. But like <laughs> very handsome. <laughs> just like I couldn't and like just like then it just like he just started it and then it just like then it just kept going. He, it, it, it was our uh, maturation into cougardom. That yeah. Is <laughs> the age of the cougar. <laughs> right. And then it was like Harry Styles. And I was just like, it just kept going. And now like Harry Styles is like 25. And I'm like, how? I thought you were 14. Oh, yeah, right? Listen, the Spice Girls <laughs> had their 25th album anniversary or something crazy. Right. Well, I think that's right. this year. Yeah, I'm yeah, saying, yeah. Oh. I know. Well, <laughs> Well, what about Alanis is playing at the Hollywood Bowl? Um, how about Alanis <laughs> on Broadway? My mother went to go see that. My mother went to go see that, and I was like, just thinking to myself, "There, you never listened to this, right?" I was in. I had it on my disc, man. I was listening. Right. I was like, "Ugh." I'm an upset, angry white lady too. Yes. I want to be able to yell and say things that aren't ironic. That's okay. Right. And, yeah. Yeah. Jag is, is, yeah. Jagged Little Pill was about the man, like t- taking down like- Dave Coulier. You, yeah, Dave Coulier <laughs> and the man. The man. And now <laughs> Jagged Little Pill is the man. You know what I mean? Like now Jagged Little Pill's on Broadway selling tickets for what? $150? Actually, Alanis Morissette's on this crazy new- ugh, these. These singing shows, they need to stop. There's oh. some new weird singing show and she is gone full blonde. And it's like <laughs> really, and I was just like, what? Alanis Morissette's blonde. We're in a pandemic. She's blonde. That's, no, that was not, that, that was, was never That was never in the cards. to me. That no. was never. That a brunette was, Alanis Morissette is, is, is a reality yeah. I'm comfortable with. There wasn't a secret track that told us. That no. We were no. Gonna- Remember that CD with the like secret track? Yes. I what? went to your house. Oh my god, I totally forgot I about that. Up the stairs. <laughs> Open the door. <laughs> you would get arrested for that track today, and you I mean, should. Like, can you? Like, you can't even do that anymore. So, just for the Nothing's children. Nothing's a secret. Like, so she gave you. She gave you like a regular, like sixteen, twelve track CD, and then. After the last song, if you just left the CD alone, a secret track appeared. It was like number 30 or something. It's it like, was like it's like a Marvel Easter egg at the end of the yes. credits, kids. Yeah. And, and the thing that was so magical about it 
is you didn't know. You just had to trust yeah. and search it out. Right. Right. Or if word of mouth, like somebody told you. But you there's what? no internet. There's no TikTok telling you there's a secret track at the end. I wonder what the OK Boomer is going to be for us. Because oh, I no. also don't even know what mine is. <laughs> I'm in between. Oh, so yeah. Because we're – you're between your Gen you're X the, and Gen and Millennial. You're like millennial. the older Millennial Gen X. That same. We're right in that because technically, I think it's eighty one, and I'm eighty. Yeah, like is eighty one is older Millennial. That sounds right. Supposedly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, um, thank you for joining us. <laughs> Talking uh, about <laughs> spooky. It's just like. <laughs> Oh, this was so much fun. Oh my gosh. And you and our next one we said Squid we're going to do is Squid Game. I'm so pumped. That's perfect. We're just going to go in. We Neither of us know have seen it. And so no. that's going to be really fun. All right. Excited. Thank you for joining us. Come find us on all the socials. Pilots 101 podcast. I am at Timmons Lisa and you are at Chris Q. Chris Q. Oh, yes. Thank you and goodbye. Bye.